According to the latest study by the Financial Times, half of all UK boards haven't talked about social media in the last 12 months. Stefan Halfiger has been following social media for Cass Business School for a very long time now. Just been promoted to Professor Stefan. Are you surprised by this? I am surprised and I was shocked when I initially learned about it because I believe boards should take into account the possibility of huge value in a social media strategy when they engage with it. Surely though these companies are using social media even if the boards aren't talking about it? One of the biggest risks when companies at some level in an uncoordinated way engage in social media is that they take a single-sided perspective on what social media can be about, the promise and the potential in this. And one risk is that they take only the perspective of the inside out. That is that they try to place products and services and create value for the customer by placing it more effectively and engaging in marketing campaigns and forgetting that the user or the community member is actually looking for other things. So this is really a case of the boards trying to take an old media strategy and, and, and put it into social media, essentially sort of taking press releases and putting them on Facebook and Twitter. Even if it is more sophisticated than that, it's clear that the user and the community member from the outside-in perspective on the firm wants much more than a valuable product or a valuable service. What they value very much is interaction with each other. And that form of interaction and sharing can mean learning for the individual and it's deeply motivating to see what is going on inside the firm and within, with the interaction with firm representatives. So is this about board members really being of the wrong generation, just simply not really understanding new technology? It's a matter of curiosity in that respect. It may explain some of the, uh, th that result that we've seen, but fundamentally it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of taking the perspective to a next level and understanding that there is more to community leadership than trying to harness the creative potential of the community, as it were. So give some advice to a struggling UK board member now. A few things. So first of all, to consider that not only the inside-out perspective is valuable, but to actively step in the shoes of the user and the community member who wants to see legitimacy in com community leadership. That is, for example, meritocracy, that the user and the member of the community who has most achieved and contributed most of, to the community, to the learning experience, to the content being generated, should have a say in where the community is going. And this may crucially not be the firm or the managers. And also, they would like to have recognition. So giving the, the community member products is one thing, but giving them recognition and seeing who is there and interacting with them in respectful ways is a fundamental step in generating the kind of what is sometimes called preemptive generosity towards community members. And presumably if they're really struggling there are plenty of consultants out there to hire. I believe it's a matter of being generous. So creating a community is giving away things and giving away attention and time and taking the community member and the user seriously as an interaction partner and a conversation partner about products about strategic issues, probably even about PR matters, and they're not unidirectional, but there's a joint emergence of what a certain company action means. And this can be controversial, and the community may also be subversive, and there's a risk involved. Professor Stefan Halfiger, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex.